Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Glowy Fix tutorial, we'll be making this glowing elfin sword photo manipulation. Okay, let's get to it. This elfin sword, glowing effect elfin sword image, actually is made up of three pictures. Here is the original photograph and then of course we have the sword in here and this dragon hiding back in the fog back there. So it's a photo manipulation, bring in three pictures, composite them and then add the glow effect and add the glowing across the front of the girl's figure as well. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this is done. I'll just close this file out. We don't need that any longer. And we'll start off by making a new file. So File, New. Now I'm in Photoshop CC 2017, which has this new new document dialog box. If you have an older version of Photoshop and you don't have this new box, no big deal. We're using the default Photoshop size right there. And just grab your default Photoshop size. It has a width of 7 and a height of 5 and it is in landscape or horizontal mode. If it says with 5 height 7 then you're in the vertical or portrait mode just switch over to your landscape or horizontal mode. So default Photoshop size, horizontal mode and you're all set. Go ahead and choose create. There's our file. I'm going to enlarge this just a little bit. Let's go up here to view and fit on screen. There we go. Okay let's now bring our pictures in. We have three pictures to work with go up here to file. Two of those will be placing. Now we'll be using place embedded which just puts the image into the file and you're all set. Place linked keeps the image linked to the original picture so that if you make a change on the original picture that change is reflected inside of your new image in Photoshop. We don't need that so we'll just be using place embedded. Now there are three pictures we have. There's the dragon and the sword and the photo of the girl. We'll place the dragon and the sword, and then we'll drag in the photo of the girl. I'll tell you about that in just a second while we're doing it that way. So first off, just place the dragon, choose OK. There's the dragon. When it comes in, you'll see this big kind of positioning X in here. Just click on the check mark, and that goes away, and that's now placed in the file. It comes in as a smart layer right there, and that's fine. Let's place the next one. Come in here, place embedded, grab the sword choose place. Now notice that both of these came in sized to fit the picture. So they were resized automatically to fit the picture. And that's why we'll be dragging and dropping the other image. It's also a way of showing the two different techniques. But there's the sword. Again, click on the check mark and you're okay. Now on the image of the girl, I don't want the girl resized to fit inside the picture. I want to keep her at original size. So to do that, let's go up here to File. And we're just going to be opening and right down here it is open recent and there's the image of the girl right there. I'll bring that up. Now I have links to all these images on the materials video support page. So go ahead and go over there and you can then download these images for your own use to work along with this video. Okay, so there's the girl. Let's just grab this. You can actually grab the background layer, drag it over here and let go. Now the nice thing about this is it brings her in just about the right size. And see there's the bottom of the page right there and I want her just about over here and when we leave her at the original size she just happens to be exactly the size that I want for the image. Just make sure that the bottom is right at the bottom of the page and leave a little bit of space behind her like that and then we're all set. So that looks pretty good. Maybe push her back just a little bit. There we go. Notice that kind of a pink line pops up down there. That's a dynamic positioning guideline. When you see that you know that you're exactly on that spot. That happens to be exactly at the bottom of the image. So we're all set just about there. That's fine. Now notice that she is holding a sword but it's facing the wrong direction. So we need to put our new sword in here and have it in the same direction as that sword because that of course is the way her hand is facing. So I'll do that one next. I'll take the sword layer down here. Let's drag it above her image. There's the sword. So we're on our sword layer. Now do control T and that selects the sword like that and then can then 
come just outside of that boundary and you'll notice up here right above her head that the cursor changes to kind of a curved double arrow. When you have that, that means you can then rotate the sword. We'll just kind of rotate it around by hand. And then we'll eyeball this and get this position just where we want it. So put it just above the hand here and then try to get that so that the curve or the rotation matches the hand position. That looks pretty good. And I'll bring that right there. Maybe a little more rotation on that. And that looks like a pretty good match. Now set it so that the hilt is just above her hand. We'll fine tune that in a second. That looks pretty good. Now you can make the sword a different size if you want to. You can you know, bring it down or bring it up by pulling it or dragging on the corners. If you do that, make sure you hold the shift key down so that the sword stays in the same ratio. But I'll leave it at the size that it came in at. That actually works out pretty well for us. So there we go. There's the sword and it's been rotated properly. Let's go ahead and click on the check mark. And now let's zoom in and fine tune that hand position. So I'm still on the sword. And then I'll be using the arrow keys, the cursor keys, to just kind of tap that position up. Let's go over here and grab the move tool right there. And then up a couple of taps on the arrow. And then just kind of check the positioning on the hand. It looks like maybe it's, it's still rotated off just a little bit. You can see here that there's the palm at the end and it sort of kind of comes down here a touch. Let's just do a fine tune adjustment on that. Same thing, Control T brings that back up again. Just outside, there's our curved little arrow. And I'll just rotate around just a little bit. And I think that's probably very better. If you look at her knuckles, these kind of these three knuckles just kind of line up like that. Let's make it match that line up and choose OK. And then again, using the arrow keys, I'm just going to kind of tap this back into position so that it's right on top of that other sword. And I think that is just about where it should be, like that. I'm leaving this little bit of decorative stuff right there just above the hand, kind of as a, a reference. Okay, let's go ahead and set our view now back to fit on screen. So sword's in position. Now we need to get the sword in behind her hand. There are a couple ways of doing this. You could go on to the girl's layer here and come in and make a selection around the hand, copy that hand using the layer copy to a new layer trick and just copy the hand onto a new layer, put it above the sword, or we could come in and actually cut out that piece of the sword and just leave it right there. Now that has less layers, a little bit easier to do, so we'll do that. We'll, we'll cut the part of the sword off that we don't want. That also makes it easier down the road as we do some photo manipulation on the girl in here. We won't need to be worrying about that hand sticking out as a separate layer. So we'll go ahead and we'll do it that way. And we'll come in. Now, two ways of doing this also. You could if you wanted to be real fancy, do a layer mask on this one and just mask out that piece on a layer mask. Probably the best way to go because that then gives you flexibility in the future. If you want to make a change on that, a change on the hand position, you'll still have the whole sword in there. So we're going to do it keeping things as clean as possible here. Let's now hide the sword. There we go. So I want to make a selection along the girl's hand here and then we'll actually use the outside selection and use that to mask out the hand with the layer mask. So let's go over to our tools here, our lasso tools. So I'll be using the polygonal lasso tool just because it's fast and easy on this one. You could use the path tool, we'll use that later on for a fancier selection elsewhere. But we'll use this one right now. Now up on feather, set the feathering here, or make sure that the feathering is set to zero pixels. This is just nice and tight on the feathering. We can always adjust that a little bit later on on the mask if we need to. Okay, so I'm going to start down here. All I really care about is the bit that is just covering up the handle of the sword. And I'll just little clicks in here and setting up this selection. And just a little ways past the sword and then straight down. And then right across the bottom of the hand as well. 
and outside across and back up to the beginning again. So there's our selection. Let's now invert the selection. So select inverse. So now everything outside here is selected and this is not. So we can now make our layer mask. Let's bring the sword back up again. Click on the sword layer. Come down to the layer mask button. Choose that and there we go. Her hand is now on top of the sword instead of underneath the sword. And since this is a layer mask, that means if I move the sword around, I can always fix that. Or if I even unlock this, unlink the, the layer mask from the image, I can move the sword and the mask stays in the same place. It makes it very easy to make little tweaks and adjustments down the road. So there you go, hand looks good. And the edge of that looks just fine. I'm happy with that, so we're good. Let's now go back to fit on screen. We'll do view, fit on screen. And there she is holding the new sword. Okay, let's now put our dragon in right up here, get the dragon basically in place. Then we'll have all of our pieces in position. So take the dragon, drag him up. There he is. Just a nice just graphic dragon in here. Now he's too big, obviously. So let's just do the control T again. Brings up our control handles here and hold the shift key down. And let's drag him down in size. I want him to fit into that area up there above the sky so that his top wing is touching the top and the bottom wing is just touching the bottom or the top of the bushes or trees back in the distance. Choose OK. All right, there he is. Now, of course, he's backwards, so you need to flip him over. So let's go up to Edit, come down to Transform, and flip horizontal. Just puts him backwards. Let's do the Control T again, bring our handles back up. I'm going to give him just a little bit of a rotation in here. I want to bring that tail up into the sky. There we go. And then anywhere around in here is good. Maybe bring the size down a little bit again. Hold the shift key down. So I want them in the sky. The top wing can, can kind of just cut out of the image. That's fine. I don't mind that. Even helps the picture a little bit if it does. Kind of breaks the frame up there. But the rest of him should be above that foreground because, of course, he's in the background behind this stuff. And I want him to stay in the sky up there and not be overlapping. So he, the bottom part has to be in front or, or above all of this stuff down here. That's the important part. Looks pretty good. Choose OK. So there's the dragon in position. I think that looks nice. All right, so there's the basic elements. Everything else at this point is going to be blending all this stuff together and putting in that glow effect on the sword. At this point, Let's go ahead and just rename the layer. So double click on the name, and I'll call that one Dragon. While we're at it, let's change the other names as well. Call this one Sword, and call this one Knight. There we go, kind of a Knight Errant on this one. Okay, Dragon, and holding down the Control key, click on the thumbnail. That gives us a selection of the Dragon. We'll be using that in just a moment. So go up to Select, and come down to Save Selection. Let's call this one Dragon. And choose OK. There we go. We can go ahead now and just deselect that. So select and deselect, or the Control D keyboard shortcut. Let's now blend him back into our background. So we'll first start off with changing the blend mode down to soft light, and that does most of it for us. But it's still a little bit, a little bit hard. So I'm going to change the opacity down to 11%, which really gets him back to about the right value in here. But the edges are still hard. Looks like a cartoon. We need to fix that part of this. So go up to Filter and come down to Blur and Gaussian Blur. And I have mine set at 5.0, radius of 5. And that softens up the edges and makes it look like it's the same kind of out of focus as everything else is back there. So that gives us our nice dragon. Now he's too light at this point. You could increase the opacity, but I'm going to be doing another step in here as well on this one. So let's leave this one as is. Take the dragon and drag him down to the new layer button right there. Gives us a copy of the dragon, and notice that that doubles up and darkens the dragon down. That's good. 
I now just want him darker at the top and lighter at the bottom just a little bit. So we'll do our fancy trick now on this one. So for this, let's give him a layer mask. Click on the layer mask button. There's our layer mask. Let's now go up to our selection. Here's select, load selection. And let's look at our list. And there's the dragon selection that we made previously. Choose OK. There's our selection. We can now put a gradient on this, on the mask, and that will help to take care of our dragon for us. So I have my color set here at black to white. This is the default colors. And grab the gradient tool using just a standard gradient here, black to white. And it's a linear gradient. And we're just going to drag from the bottom tip of the wing up to the top of the wing. Just like that. It's a very, very subtle thing. But what that does is it hides the second layer dragon down here and then shows it up here. So down here we're seeing the first dragon and the levels we set there. Up here we're seeing the second dragon and the levels up there. That's why I actually have the two dragons in here. And we can now just go ahead and deselect that. It's kind of a subtle little thing as you see, but those little subtleties help to really sell an image. So he's lighter down here, that's our first layer showing. He's darker up here, that's the second layer showing, and then kind of blending between the two. So dragon's finished. We're all taking and we're all done here with the dragon. And I'll now just hide these smart filters. Click on the little arrow right there by the layer and hide those things. Those are just in the way at this point. So dragon layers are done. We now can get to work on the sword in here. So we're going to begin working on our glow. Before adding in the glow though, I want the glow just on the blade and not on the handle hilt of the sword down here. So we need to mask out just the blade part of this. Now our first layer down here, this is the whole sword. So let's leave that as is. So make a copy of this, drag this down to the new layer button. And here's a copy of our sword. I'm going to rename this one Blade, just to keep things easy to see. So there's the sword, that's the whole sword. This will be just the blade. On this, we need to mask it out so we only have just the blade showing. Everything else is masked out. Let's just see if we can zoom in just a little bit here. There we go. And this just Maybe one more, I think I can manage this in here. Let's see. That's too far. Okay, there we go. We can see the tip up there. There's the bottom of the blade. We'll be doing a new layer mask on this with just the sword showing. So let's go back to our blade layer. Right click, right on the layer mask. Right click on the layer mask itself and click on Delete Layer Mask. And let's give it a new layer mask. Notice that the hand is showing again. That's fun. It's going to be going away in just a second. So polygonal lasso tool. And then just make a nice little careful selection right along the bottom edge of that blade. Take it outside a little ways. And let's go out and around the sword. And then back to our beginning. There we go. And then click the layer mask button again. There's our layer mask, and this is now showing just the blade. So if I hide the sword underneath, you see there it's just the blade showing. So there's our blade. Okay, now we can work on adding some glow onto this thing. And we'll do that by taking this and making three copies of this. So I have three total of the blade. So drag this down to the new layer button. We now have two, drag it down again, and we have three of these. I'm going to call this blade one, blade two, and blade three just to keep things nice and clean. There we go. And blade two and blade three. So sword at this point is just the the handle and hilt stuff down below here. And then blade three is the sword that's actually visible in the picture. These two are in behind. And I'm doing this so that we can have three different levels of glow around the sword. Let's come down to our blade three and we'll give this one a glow. 
go up to layer, come down to layer style, and outer glow right there. You can see there's kind of an outer glow happening already on this. I'm going to set this at just the default white right there. You can see there's just a bit of a glow happening in behind the sword on this. Now this is our background glow and I have this one set at 160 pixels, 1px and the technique is left at the default which is softer everything else is just the same, blend mode is screen, these are all just the default settings on this one. You can adjust how bright that glow is by adjusting your opacity in here. The higher the opacity the brighter the glow is the lower the less of the glow and I have mine set at 35 here so just kind of a subtle glow it's up to you how much you want to have on your opacity. You can have more if you want to. But just kind of a subtle thing happening in this, or just our background glow. Choose OK. All right, now I want to get brighter and brighter as we get towards the sword. That's why we have three layers. We can do three levels of our brightness in here. So our blade two, same thing. Layer, come down to layer style, outer glow. And let's now change the size on this one on the outer glow to 60. Just tick off that one and make it 60. You can see now it's much brighter in there. It still kind of fades in or blends into the background, but it's much brighter closer to the source. We're getting kind of a, a layered effect on the glow. Okay, so everything else stays the same. That's all fine. Choose OK. Let's now go to our top layer here. Do that one more time. Layer, layer style, outer glow and this time change the size to 40 let me just change that again here well, actually there it is without and there it is with so that really brightens up that edge right up next to the sword and choose OK so using three levels in here allows us to control how that glow happens it happens really bright in here and then kind of fades out as it goes and you can only do that with having multiple layers in here. Okay, that's the outside glow. There we are. Now I want to change the color of the bottom so that the inner glow is white and but this outer stuff is not quite. It's kind of a, a yellowish tone. So let's come down to our bottom glow layer down here, blade one. Double click where it says effects, brings us back up again. Make sure you're on the outer glow section and let's change the color. Click on our little color swatch right there. And the color that I use on this one is, you know, it's right down at the bottom down here. It's FFDD77, which happens to also be web safe in case you care about that. And it's just kind of a mid-tone orange, clear up at the lightest end here and about mid-tone on the saturation choose OK and OK. So there we go. What that does is the furthest glow out now has a yellowish tint to it and then it goes more towards white as it goes in towards the middle. So that gives us kind of a colorized glow on that. So there's the basic outer glow taken care of for the blade. Now the blade itself needs to glow as well. That's our top layer up here. Top blade 3. Double click on effects and on this one leave the outer glow as is and let's add an inner glow right here. There's our inner glow. Now on the inner glow change the technique from softer to precise. Leave the source as edge. Let's change the size here to 70px. There's kind of a preview on that. So we're adding a glow in there to the sword itself. And on the choke, let's bring the choke up to 29%. And if I go back to zero on this, just kind of watch the blade. There's zero, and then 29 kind of pulls that in towards the center a bit. So there we go, and okay, so there's the inner glow happening as well. So there's the inner glow added, so the glow matches, and then there's the bright outer glow. Here's our secondary outer glow which is right in there. And the outside outer glow is that kind of yellowish outer glow. 
And there we go, there is the glowing sword taken care of. So that's all nicely done. We can now click on these little arrows right here and then let's just collapse those layers down. We've done a lot of work at this point, so it's probably a good time to go ahead and save this file while we're at it. So let's file, save, and I'm just going to give this one a, a name of Elfin Sword and choose save. There we go. So nice and saved and protected, just in case. Now let's look at that hilt down here. At this point, it's too bright, so I want to darken this down and we'll do a little edge glow on this as well, a couple of steps on this one. So I'll come down here to the layer that says sword, our sword layer, and let's put an adjustment layer above this. So layer, and we'll come down to new adjustment layer, and then use levels. Now the reason why, you know, right here, there we go, and where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, make sure that is selected, choose OK. That way the levels control only affects that one layer. And the reason why I'm doing all these masks and all the layer styles and these adjustment layers, we'll be doing another one of these later on, is that you can go back and make changes if you want to easily. That's the whole reason for all this stuff. You want to make this so that you can easily modify, change, and update your file later on. Okay, all I want to do here is I want to darken down this hilt. It's a bit too bright and shiny in here. So let's go ahead and change this. We'll do that by bringing down the brightness here by using the slider control. And so if I go to the right side, it gets darker. If I go to the left, it gets brighter. So let's set this at 0 0.38. We're just toning down the gray values, the midtone values in here by moving our midtones out to the right-hand side. Everything else stays the same. That stays the same. That stays the same. And then just close that down. So there it is normal and there it is adjusted. It just kind of tones that down a bit and helps to blend that back into the picture. It still has some detail, still you know, nice and bright and interesting, but it just kind of tones it down a little bit. Now it's a bit too bright in here, right there in behind the hand. Kind of want to darken that down just a little bit so we can do that as well by toning down the light parts of this. And that's back on our same levels control. Double click on the icon, brings it back up again. So the top one in here, we're able to adjust the values. I can make the darks darker up here, the lights lighter over here, or adjust our midtones. And now I want to make the darks darker. You can do that with the lower control down here. If I move this white to the left, it darkens down the lights. I can lighten the darks by moving this over. I'm going to leave those where they are. I want to darken down the lights. So let's set this at 114 in here. 114. And close that down again. So there we go. That's now knocked back and it feels like it's part of the actual image. Also having this darker makes the sword look brighter by comparison. So that's very important. That part of the sword is dark. Part of it is brighter. Therefore it looks like it's more of a glowing effect. Okay, now we can come in and we can brighten up just the edge in here. So we'll come in and I'm going to put a new layer above the sword. Click on the sword right there. Let's do a new layer above the sword. There we go. And we're going to change our paint color here. I'll put this back at the color we used before on the blade on the glow on the outsides, that was FFDD77. There it is, FFDD77. Choose OK. There's our blade color. Let's now go to our paintbrush. And that's way too large. You want a, a soft brush, but fairly small. So let's just take a look in here. There's a 65 soft. Let's click on that one. Still too large. I'm going to be using the bracket keys, the left bracket key, to bring this down a bit. So it's just about about that size. You see right there. And I'm going to paint right along the top edge. You just kind of freehand, freehand paint this just along the top edge, just like that. There we go. If you want that a bit brighter at this point, just come back in and 
do another paint stroke along that edge. There it goes, so nice and bright along that edge, looks really good. Let's go ahead and change our view now back to fit on screen and see how we're doing. Okay, that looks good, nice bright edge in here, looks fine. We now can work on making this a bit more moody in here. So I want to have a kind of a darkness around this. So let's change this to a darker effect and add a darkening around the outer edges, kind of a vignette effect on the outer edges. We're also going to be changing the color of the background, making it more blue and then leaving her a brighter color. So it requires a few steps in here. The first part about this is let's take our night layer and duplicate the night layer. Just like that. There we go. So that's night and night copy. I'm going to change the back one here and rename this background. And then let's just take the copy off of that one so it's nice and clean. Okay, so above the background layer here we can build in our vignette at this point. This is fairly straightforward and easy to do. Now grab the elliptical marquee tool up here and come just inside the upper left corner and drag down to just inside the bottom right corner making an ellipse in here. This makes a selection like that. Let's now invert our selection. So I'll select inverse. So now the outside area is selected. There we go. Let's now fill that with black. So let's change over to our paint bucket tool and then click inside here and if I hide the night layer, there we go, there's that fill in front of the background. We can go ahead and deselect that. There it is. Okay, so far so good. Looks kind of weird, of course. Looks like an old-fashioned picture, so we need to fix that part of this. So we're going to give this a nice blur in here, and that's Gaussian Blur. So filter, there's a Gaussian blur up here, but that just repeats the last setting. So come down to Blur and Gaussian Blur. And now let's set this blur way up high to 100. So it's a real soft edge on that. There we go, real soft edge on that blur. And she was OK. Now it's too solid out here, so we're going to bring down the opacity on this a bit. So let's set the opacity down to 70. So you can just kind of see through that a little bit now on the edges. So that darkens down the outer edge. Now a couple of problems in here already. You can kind of see it that it's also darkening down her head right there. And that's why we made a copy of her layer. We're going to be going to that layer in a little bit and clipping her out of that layer and working with her separately. But there we go. There's our nice vignette. Now let's make a layer above this layer. And I'll be putting in a blue photo filter on top of that. So we'll do that with the layer and come down to new adjustment layer and then way down here photo filter. Leave that unchecked, that's fine. And let's change the filter here to the cooling filter 82. That just cools the whole picture down. Now it puts this layer in above the vignette, as you can see, so it cools the vignette down as well. That's what you want to have happening. You can adjust the density down here, but I found that 25, the default setting is just fine. Go ahead and close that. Now, because it's a filter layer, we can always come back and change that later on. Just double click on that little camera there. You can change your settings if you're not happy with that. So at this point, the background is good. Sword is good. Hilt's fine. Dragon is fine. Everything is looking pretty good in here need to work on the girl, I need two things. One, I want her warm tone, and two, we need a highlight or a glow along the front in here. Did another glow adding onto this picture. So let's come down here to our night layer. Let's bring that back up again. Obviously, as you can see here, the background is showing. We need to hide the background to see our adjusted background. So we'll do this by putting a selection around the girl and creating a layer mask. Now I'll make this layer mask using the pen tool, which is right there. And what you do is you use the pen tool to make a path around your figure. You then convert that path to a selection and you're all set to go. Now I'll start this path off right down here. It takes a little while to make the path, 
pen tool is real nice detailed way of making perfect paths but I won't take the time in this video to show you the whole process around the whole figure. I'll just do the beginning and then go to the next stage where the path is already completed. But if you want more information about how to use the pen tool to make paths, I have a video just about that and I'll put a link in the description for that so you can go ahead and find that video. So let's start off. I'll just zoom in down below here and we're zoomed in. And I can see up here this may be a bit much on the sword hill. We'll play with that a little bit later on. It's a little cartoony looking. We'll adjust that. I think maybe I'll change the blend mode on that. We'll see how things go. Okay, down here to the pen tool. And with the pen tool, what you do is, I'll just start right here, is you click and drag and it gives you a curve point. Now just follow your curves around. If you're outside of a curve, put a point there. If you're on an inside curve, put a point there. Click and drag and that gives you a curve line in there, a curve path. So there's the next outside point and then over here and then right there. Where you have a corner like this, just click at that point, come to your next curve, click and drag, and that gives you your control handles and you can begin to build your path this way. Once you put your your points in, then you can come back and you can adjust that by using the direct select tool and modify those points, kind of, you know, adjust the position, adjust the curve, and all of that to make it an absolutely perfect path. And again, the to see the process on that, I have a separate video on that, and you can find that in the description. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to pause the video now, and then I'll complete this path. Once the path is finished, then I'll bring the video back up again. Now, and there's the path created around the whole figure. Let's now zoom back into the bottom and we're going to be modifying the path. I'll show you just a couple of steps here and then I'll go off camera again to finish the modification. See the path doesn't match the line exactly and that's fixed here with the direct selection tool. I can grab my points and I can pull those out so it's exactly on the line where I want it and then I can push control handles around and then use these to just kind of push the path exactly into where I want it. This is the real power of using paths to make your selections in that is completely adjustable. So you can make it absolutely perfect. And then once it's perfect, you can then go ahead and make your selection from that. So it's just a matter of going around and making little adjustments on the path until it's exactly perfect. And you're going to have a video just about how to do paths and you can watch that if you haven't done this before on using paths to make selections. Okay, so there we go. That's the next step I'll be performing off camera. I'll go ahead and pause the camera. I'll finish cleaning up my selection or clean my path rather and we'll then convert this path into a selection. Okay, so I've cleaned the path up. Now we can now convert it over to a selection. If I open up the paths up here, you see there's our work path right there. Okay, on our night layer I'm still on the direct selection tool. There we go. And then right click inside the path. And let's just click down here. There we are. Now I can see it. And choose make selection. Set your feathering radius. I have mine set at one pixel. Just kind of softens up that edge just a little bit. And choose OK. And there's our selection. We can then use that to make a layer mask to show just the girl. Before I do that though, I want to fix the hair up along here. Now I went outside of the hair just a little bit and we can zoom in to see that. And I did that on purpose so we can clean up that mask up along that edge. Okay, go up to select and come down to select and mask. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, then this would say refine edge. Same basic thing little different control in here, a little newer control, but it works exactly the same as it has for a long time. We want to be using the Brush or Refine Edge Brush Tool. I'll leave all my settings at their default settings, and I'm just going to brush right over that edge up here, and it's going to take care of cleaning up that hair for us. There we go, and just little more along those edges here. Get that little section right there. And that just cleans up that mask for us right along that difficult edge and get us all the little little wispy hairs in there. That's good. 
go to our output settings, which are right down here, and we're going to output to selection. Or we can even, at this point, skip a step, and we can go right to layer mask. So I'll put the layer mask, choose OK, and there's the girl, there's the layer mask. Let's go ahead and fit this on our screen, fit on screen. There it is. Now if I hide this layer, there it is before and back. So you can see we now have the girl is in the warm tones from the original picture, and the background is in the cool tones. And that helps you just to pop out from the background. So there's totally in the environment, and you're just kind of popping out just a little bit, a little bit more interesting. Okay, there we go. That step is taken care of. All we have left to do now is to add a glow onto the girl and fix this light on the back side, and we're all set. Now, before I go to that step, let's just zoom it at the top. Sometimes if you're doing this kind of refined edge thing, you may have some brightness happening on the edges of the hair. This looks fine though. It looks like we're okay. But if you had some brightness happening along those edges, if it didn't quite catch catch that right, just go over to the girl side of the picture here and then use the burn tool and just kind of go over the edge with that burn tool. Just darken it down a little bit. Use your exposure at 50% or less. Just kind of come in right along the edge to darken down those edges. But we're fine here. We don't have that problem, which is nice. So let's go ahead fit on screen again. All right, so that's taken care of. Let's now come down to our layer here, and we're going to be making some adjustments in here to the girl's image. Let's put an adjustment layer in here. So layer, new adjustment layer, levels, and where it says clip in here, clipping mask, go ahead, choose that. Use previous layer to create clipping mask that links that adjustment layer to that one level, that one layer in here. That's what we want. Let's just bring our contrast up a little bit in here. I'm going to change the mid values here, our gray tones, to 0.76. Kind of darkens them down just a little bit. And I'm going to increase our lights a lot to 144. So we're really put some punch in there on the girl's image. So there's before and there's after. Really kind of brightening her up. And that's mostly for the front in here. I want to have that front brighter. So that takes care of that. We'll darken down the back here in just a little bit. So there we go. Brightens up the contrast on that picture quite a bit and brightens up the front side, which is what we want to have happening in here. Okay, now that we have that, we can put a new layer in here above this layer. So click on the, on the night layer, our girl night here, and new layer. As that comes in clipped along with the other layers, that's just fine. That's what you want, actually. And that will clip it into the layer mask as well. It takes care of that problem as well. We now want to put a glow in here on the front side. So let's go over here to our colors. And I'm going to be setting the colors in here to kind of an orangey color. The color that I've used on this down here, the hexadecimal colors, is FED. E 9A. So F E D E 9A. As you can see, we're full saturation or full value up here, full brightness, and then down about two thirds on the saturation. Just kind of a nice light orangey color in here, kind of a nice bright color. Moving up to the brush tool, there we are. And then to our brush size, you want a soft brush, a hardness of zero, and a real large size. I'll set mine at 800, real large size brush. And there it is. I'm not going to be painting along the front here, not right on the girl's figure, but across the front and letting it spill onto the girl's figure. And just kind of like that, just kind of spilling onto the figure. Looks real strange at this point, but that's what you want. You want that effect. So it just, just spills onto the front. Now we need to blend this, of course, into the girl's figure. So there's our layer. Let's go up here to normal, change the blend mode here down to soft light, and that blends that into the girl's image. Now it's still too bright, there's still too much, so let's bring our opacity down, bring this down to 50%, and there we go, that's just about right. So here it is without that, and here it is with, so we've added a glow in here on the girl's face coming off of our sword. So there's our, our glow effect. 
Now the back of the girl is still too bright. I don't want to have all this lightness in here. I want to darken that down. I want a little bit of lightness. Maybe there's a moon back here or something. So I want just a little bit of an edge, but not too much. I also want to cool the back down a little bit. So I'll do the exact same thing here. Make a new layer. There we go. Let's change our color. This time we want kind of a blue tone on this one. And just over in here someplace, just kind of a, a mid-tone mid -tone blue on that. That's pretty good. Now what I have done here is 001894. I think that's okay for our blue values. Maybe a little, a little bit different in here. Just a little slight adjustment on that. Let me change, change this down to 050B7D. Just a little bit further down on that. So there we go. 050B7D. And again, the same trick. I want a smaller brush size this time. Go to our brush. Let's change the brush down to half of that. We'll change it down to 400. There's a 400 brush. And this time, same thing. We're just going to paint it along the back side, though. Again, letting it spill onto the girl. Paint off of the girl's side and let it spill onto the girl just like that. And a little bit towards the top up here. There we are, it's kind of spilling onto the back. Same thing as before, it looks kind of weird right now, so we want to blend this in. This time though, we want to blend it in in a darker mode. So go up here to our blend modes, and the darker stuff is up here. This is your lightening, and this is your darkening. So let's come down here and do color burn. This kind of burns that coloring, gives a nice, nice dark effect on that. And you can then control the amount of that by adjusting your opacity. I'll set that to 70%. And that leaves us a little bit of lightness along that back edge. Let me just change my tool here. There we go. So you get a little bit of lightness along the back edge. If I had this at 100%, it's too dark back there. I want a little light still spilling, so let's change this to the 70%. So a little bit of light shows on the back. And there we go. That's it. We're now done. So there it is. That's how to create our glowing elfin sword effect. As you can see, a lot of steps. Took a while to do this one, but it gives you a real nice effect, real nice quality. Now on any of this stuff, you can go back and you can adjust and modify. All of our steps allow for modification. Let's say I didn't want to have as much glow in here on the front. I can just adjust the opacity on that. You know, bring that down. So you can make that exactly where you want. Maybe come in here for a 35% or so. Maybe 36%, a little less glow in there. It's up to you. You can make those kinds of adjustments. If you think that she is too bright in here, you can actually add some transparency onto her, and then we'll see her darker, bluer version in behind. Just like that, just kind of knocks her down a little bit. So because we have these adjustments in here, you can now fine tune the picture to get it exactly the way you want. But there we go. That's how to make our glowing elfin sword photo manipulation. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.